If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Sponsorship provided by Get Flywheel, optimized WordPress hosting at getflywheel.com, wistia.com at w-i-s-t-i-a.com, and Zoho Mail. everybody and welcome to episode 47 of 47 that's yes. a prime number isn't it it is I'm, I would, about no, the I'm, terrible. I'm terrible at math so i guess it's a prime number um episode 47 of the social media x podcast i'm seth i am howard there's howard yeah, it took a little while to transition to you there and let's get this show on the road. Support the show by going to patreon.com slash fully tech org that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash fully tech org and we want to thank our sponsors at the top of the show, and we'll thank them throughout as well. Wistia Flywheel and Zoho Mail. So, them. Howard, how yes, are you? I'm good. Good. I just had a cup of coffee, so I'm wired. Wired for sound. Exactly. So Facebook adds 3D touch, quick actions for posting photos, updates, and I, on, photos and updates on iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. It's a mouthful. Yes, and, I noticed. I got it. Well, you have the six S. You have the, the plus, or right? No, just the six S. I don't need a something. As, the six S plus is a little big for me. It's a you is know. It bend? Um, no, the new ones do not bend. They've uh, they've been reinforced. Not that the old ones really bent either, but that's you know that's called physics. If physics. You, you put enough pressure, I'm sure you can make yes. the six. Yes. Yeah, so you can make the six S bend if you really wanted to. It would probably break. But, well, you know. I look at it this way: if your goal is to break your phone, of course you can break your phone. Mm. So, um. It's interesting. The new 3D touch, which yeah, is a fancy so back, way of saying you kind of push on it. Um, yeah. It's a, you kind of push uh, on the whole process here. It's a right click, essentially, is what it is. It, well, it's not even a right click. Think about it this way. Here's the app, and you just sort of go, and it gives you a couple options. Right it's, exactly what my, it's exactly what my laptop does. Right. When I'm not touching my screen on my HP laptop, yep. I hold it down, and options come up. Yes. So it's This is not revolutionary to Apple, guys. Let's keep that in mind. It's not that revolutionary, but what's interesting is when you're thinking about how you use apps on a phone, there's a whole lot of okay, I open the app and then I have to find the thing. And this is sort of a one step, hey, I just want to post a picture, I just want to do this. Mm-hmm. As opposed to going into the app and then doing it. It does give you a little bit of extra stuff. So for example, I love the fact that if I, I have podcasts open here, this is app is my pick, but it has 3D Touch too, so it lets me go right back into the podcast I was listening to, or other ones that I've recently listened. It's it's neat. It's, and I'm, I'm just waiting for Android to get that next. So, but uh, again, those are the kinds of things where that sort of push into it. I like that developers are picking up on it. It's a good use. Being able to have that effective right click, where you have a few options of things that you can jump into, is great. Um, I love it. Why not? This, I mean, if I can Amen. start my podcast up without. Start having to go in and find the podcast and press play, and if I could just like just do a quick little restart, that makes it really really easy. So, but what's interesting is now Facebook is adding it, so you can actually do stuff within the Facebook app, which is yes. really nice. Yes, and remember, it's really that was an actual story, Howard. <laughs> yes, but it's really just doing a shortcut to it. So that's yeah, it's a shortcut it's, button. It's, it's, it's making that experience faster, easier, simpler, whatever you want to call it. It is doing that. It's it's slimming it down a little bit. Exactly. Which um, Twitter's doing a little bit of slimming down itself lately. Speaking of slimming down. The only reason why I said that was so I could have a segue. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Speaking of slimming down, Twitter lays off 8% of of its workforce, yet because of that, the stock is up 5% on the news. 
before yeah. we go ahead, before we go into that, have you ever noticed that every time someone does a, a segue, they're so proud of it they mention the segue, thus killing the segue? Thus killing the segue. Yes, I noticed that. I was actually gonna be like It's not oh. just me. It's not just me. No. It's all over Twitter. Everyone. It's all over everyone says it's segue. They're like, segue. Yeah, yeah, I finally got a good segue. Well, what you do is not after you run the segment, say, Did you like that segue? After the segue has occurred. But um I mean, to this Twitter lays up eight percent of its workforce, stock is up five percent on the news. The, you know what? I wish Twitter was not a public company. Yes. Because I think that Twitter is now because they are a public company and Jack Dorsey's back and you know they're going to do some back. things to try to make it good for investors. When you're a public company, your job is shareholder value. Yeah, you have a fiduciary responsibility. And really I think the, you know, the culture of Twitter doesn't want shareholder value. It no. wants Twitter as this great experience. And when you're a private company, you can do things that make the experience great and make a good ad platform and do all these different things. And, you know, unfortunately right now for Twitter, in order for them to show shareholder value, mm -hmm. they have to do cuts. They have to be uh, more Spartan or they have to introduce new stuff because if all they do is just keep being great at Twitter and keep doing great things for Twitter, yeah, the shareholders are going to go, well, where's the value? And that's it, it that's sucks. a really hard way really to drive suck. innovation. So, I mean, the thing is, with being private, you can you can be private and have investors. Absolutely, These, you can't raise as much money, but you can still keep it private and have some investors that are interested in it for the long haul. I mean, right. the thing is that Twitter is more of a backbone, like you know, level three or level. You know, in my opinion, right. it's a communications platform. It's like email. Right. Yeah. It's not it, email it has a bunch of different flavors. There's Gmail, there's Outlook, there's Exchange, there's this, there's that. You know, there's Yahoo with a little ad to the bottom of your emails. But um ultimately Twitter's trying to say we're not an infrastructure, we're a product. Yes. And people have tried to make Twitter S clones, but they haven't taken off because it's Twitter's Twitter. Right. And everybody's on Twitter, so let's be where everyone is. Yeah, so Yeah, I my hope, I mean, I think about it this way. Dell is a private company, mm -hmm. and they just announced this uh, buyout of EMC. It's $67 billion. B -b -b billion. Right. So the idea being Dell can operate in the way that they want because they're not having to report every quarter, this is how we're improving things. For they, the they, went, they went the opposite. They went public to private they, again. Right. They took themselves back to private. And frankly, I would love to see Twitter take themselves private. Never happen. Well, you go a business before that happens. I have a feeling that um, every business, I mean, realistically, Apple is trying to go private. They are actively buying back their own shares. They are doing things to say, we want more autonomy as to how we make decisions. Um, they are one of the biggest companies. For them to go private is one of the biggest, hurt, hardest things to do. But Dell is private. So and Dell is and doing. Dell's not something to laugh at. I mean, Dell is small. a big company. Yes. I mean, and I think because they're going private, I mean, my, my the fact that my fiasco with Dell, right? Just, you know, two weeks ago, trying to get a Dell computer to work and having a bad batch and going through two computers and back and forth to Best Buy a few times. Other than that, Dell is not Dell hell anymore, from what I hear. Yes, they're I mean, they're they're better computers because they're not just saying, all right, cheap parts, cheap parts, cheap parts. Yep. Now I got a bad batch, so I'm hoping that what I'm saying is true because what I got were cheap parts, cheap parts, cheap parts. Right. But that being said, from what I hear, other people actually like it. Jeff Jarvis, who coined the term Dell Hell, he actually likes Dell now. So go figure. Yeah, minor details. Anyhow, back on the Twitter land, Twitter is now copying YouTube, probably because of the fiduciary responsibility of the shareholders to come up with new stuff. They're copying, which is not new, right. um, YouTube's way of monetizing creator and publisher videos. Now, last time I checked, I, when I think video, I think YouTube. When I think yep. video, I second think Facebook. I might think Vimeo. I might think Wistia, one of our sponsors, who we'll talk about after this little talk. Uh, but I don't think Twitter as a, as a real video platform, you can do, what, 15-second, 20-second clips? But no, I don't. You, I don't think of it as a video platform per se. Yeah. So them going copying YouTube, when at least in my mind, and I'm pretty much out there in social media world, I don't see them. This is a logical push. 
Am I wrong, Howard? No, I don't think you're wrong. I think this is something where the culture of Twitter doesn't care about this. I want to send a tweet watching a video. It's quick. Yeah, well, and part of it is if someone wants to share a video, they're generally going to share a link. And when Twitter brings that link and says, oh, well, we're going to preview that video on Twitter as part of the experience so that you just have to share the link and we'll do it. Uploading video to Twitter directly, I don't want to say it's bad. I want to say that it's not how people who I can't really love Twitter, it really. they, they just, the it's, yeah, it's not, it's, there's a, the way to do it is the same way you would upload a photo. Um, but remember, Twitter used to not host things like photos and videos. So the yeah. longtime Twitter users, we don't think, let me host my videos. No, I do YouTube and say, hey, look at social YouTube. media addicts. Look at social media addicts with H. Yermish. Right. Or with uh, at Sunswept, Jerry Reigns, you know. And check it out over here. Yeah. Wistia, or back at my site where I own the content. Yeah. Not in this another silo. Like I still, I don't put stuff up on Facebook. I link back to Wistia. I link back to my post. I put an image on, on Facebook, but I, I, I am a big proponent of owning your stuff. Yeah, so and, I don't know. Yeah. And that, and I am too. And that's what I recommend to clients. But if if people are using Twitter as a video platform, then this move makes a lot of sense. It's a good split for the revenue. It encourages creators. All right, so all right, let's just put it out to our audience of mm -hmm. one person who watches this. I think. <laughs> um, it do you use this? Do you use Twitter for video? If you do, email us info Let at fullytech.org. I want to hear about this because I don't, don't think Twitter. When I think I don't think video when I think Twitter. I don't think I Twitter don't when either. I think. Video. Eh, but maybe I do think video when we talk about our first sponsor, which is Wistia. Yes, Wistia. Oh, look at him in his transitions. Ooh, look at that! It's very Ooh, stunning. Fancy. That was very was, fancy. I want to say that. I was talking about our segues. Oh yeah, pretty much. So let me tell you a little bit about the Wistia. Um, we want to thank Wistia for host uh, for sponsoring the show. Uh, Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform. They really help businesses get the most out of online video. Um, we use it for our own video here. It's much more professional than YouTube, and we get great data that helps us understand how our uh, audience, uh, as large and extensive as it is, and what they're doing with our content, how they're consuming it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing about Wistia is they have a lot of really great resources on their site. So for example, if you uh, want to learn about Wistia and all the stuff that they do, they kind of teach you. They've got newsletters, they've got scenes, they've got a great... It's, run, it's a great service. Really, really good stuff about, you know, things like, hey, how do you show your laptop screen on a video that you're doing? Well, you know, you go over here and you see the video about it and they're going to teach you. And not That's only cool. are they going to teach you and show you how to do it, they're going to give you some content and show you some hints and here's how to like zoom in on it, um, what process. And That's not uh, how I would think, nothing to knock them, but it's not how I would think to record your video, your screen. Well, and again, this is one of those things where they're showing you a way that has a very specific style as opposed to just saying, hey, we're going to do like a screen flow or a screen Yeah, that's, yeah like a screencast-o-matic. I, I never thought to use an external camera. Yeah, but again, this is one of the things that's great about Wistia. In addition to all these tutorials where they show you how to do things, um, you know, in their community, and you have people, I don't, I'm not going to log into my Wistia account here, um, but you go into that community, but you can also look and see things like, well, how do I, you know, what are my analytics about? Mm -hmm. How do I do more call to actions? What kinds of trends am I seeing? What parts of my videos Absolutely. are working well? Really, really great stuff. And if you want to give them a try, they have a free version of their service that holds up to 50 videos. Free, so free, 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 free. Or free. Free, free, free. So go I check mean, them out. Uh, mark on it, but, you know, it's free. You know, give them a little hat exactly. to back to that. It's pretty cool. Exactly. So click on the link in our show notes and uh, let them know that we sent you. Um, but uh, go ch check out Wistia. It's a great set of resources, great team. Uh, really, really uh, good. So, uh, and with that, we will get back on with the show. And as he fades back in, very, very high tech, oh, yeah, isn't that cool? He just he just rediscovered a cam twist, so he's you know happy. Exactly. He's very, he's very, Howard's very pleased with himself. It's working. All I have to say is it's working. So right now, knock wood. Before you know it, Howard be like ah uh, and crash and crash, which he does gloriously. Anyhow, speaking of something that you know has kind of crashed and burned a little bit. Um, Google doesn't want you to give up on Google Plus yet. Not yet. Um, Not there's five yet. reasons why you shouldn't give up on it. Um, I've honestly, I'm Mr. I'm Mr. Google Plus. I was Mr. Google Plus. I'm never on it anymore. I think what's really interesting is when I'm on I Facebook. see. I'm on Facebook every day. 
Yeah. What the funk? I know. When I think about what content I'm seeing on Google+, Plus, I see exact copies of everything that I've seen on Facebook or Twitter. LinkedIn or Twitter. I see, the, I see duplicates on Google+. Plus. And it's, some, it's something where I will see on Google+, Plus, like five people like it and three comments. And on Facebook, you'll see 3,000 people like it and you know 200 comments. It's, it's just so painful because like, I, was number, I was on their second day of, of uh, being out there. I finagled my way in, and I now have 35,000 followers on there. Mostly from India, not knocking India, but, you know, 35,000 followers on um, Google+. Plus. But the audience isn't there as much anymore. I, like I said, I go there to host these hangouts. You know, yeah. I'm waiting for it to be able to do that without going to Google+. Plus. I mean, I feel it's painful because I used to go to Google+, Plus every single day. And I used to live on Google+. Plus. I used to, you know... Hangouts were the big thing. Now Blab is the big thing. Uh, and I'll tell you, I actually use Google Plus a lot more than I used to really? because there's a couple of communities specifically yeah, the for communities, photography. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say the communities are really good still. Yeah. It might be something that they might want to spin that out say Google Plus communities. Well, what's interesting is there's, uh, there's a couple of communities that have both Facebook versions and Google Plus versions. And yeah. the Google Plus version of the community is fabulous. And the Facebook version of the community is pretty terrible. Really? Um, it's it, when I look at the interaction, all the stuff on the Facebook versions of the communities are just like, "Hey, look at my thing," and click look on my thing, uh -oh. and I hope for comments. Or on Google Plus, it's just the communities on Google Plus are really, really nice. They did it a great job. Really slow with the to me lately. Like the communities, I click on, I'm, I'm clicking on my laptop over here. Here we'll do a, we'll do a Wistia here. We'll do a Wistia. Wow. <laughs> oh, maybe he'll sick here on over here. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling a little seasick. It took that long for it to go, to go to the community, which is very, very strange that they're running so slow. I wonder if there's any server issues. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. But I, I, I don't know. I, I'm actually finding the Facebook groups with their app is pretty cool. Because like I want yep. to, I, I love road cycling is a great, you know, mm -hmm. even that one, Howard? Um, I'm not in that one, but. You should. Uh, it's really I, cool. I, there are a number of groups that I'm in on Facebook. And there's and some bad ones. Good, some ones that are like, are like, I have yeah. one that even no one's in. I created it and I kind of forgot about it. But, you know, I, I just looked here today, and one of my community social media mar marketing consultants, whatever the hell it's called, I don't even remember myself, has 800 people in there. 800 people. I'm like, I didn't do anything to cultivate that. 800 people thought that was interesting, but there's no interaction in there. Mainly my fault, I haven't cultivated it. But it, I don't know. I, it just Google Plus was there for me. I had I had lo I massive love. I fought against the their oppressors. I fought against the mass media saying Google Plus is dead from the from the get go. I don't think it's dead. I don't think it's dead. I think it's very niche. I think it's going the way of Ning before Ning got uh -huh. whatever the hell happened to Ning. I think that I think that the saving grace is. Their communities. Like, there's a cycling group on here that looks really cool, but I haven't been in it because I, I belong to that one cycling group on Facebook, and that's the only one I'm involved in because it's a direct forums. You only belong to so many before you're not really invested in any of them. Right. I don't know. You can see I'm passionate about that, but you know. Absolutely. In other Google News. In other Google News, they have a new Maps search result interface. Yeah, um, I've noticed that. It's a little weird. It's a little bit weird. I yeah, think it was really a good change. Doing that. They never they're never really good at like, introducing them. You get used to them eventually, but they're like, a little weird. Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes you look at how they change things and you think back, was it broken before? Like and, the first one was perfectly fine. And, and, and this new one, my wife's like, I can't stand this. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it's, it is definitely a case of change makes people crazy. So is it good versus the other one? It probably is. Google doesn't change anything unless they have data that shows that this would make sense. And, and I think it's a way for them to, well, again, they go from one that didn't make sense that everyone got used to to another one that doesn't make sense that everyone <laughs> will get used to. That's it. <laughs> so, you know, I, I stop asking the question of is one better than another? It's just, no, this one has these features and maybe it makes it simpler for them to have a more consistent inter mm -hmm. interface on mobile versus desktop so that they can have a more unified set of controls, whatever things that they do with that, you know. Whatever floats the boat. Whatever We're floats their boat, the they've got a reason. They usually have data to back it up. So there you go. 
There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Exactly. Oh, and we have a typical story here. Twitter said to cut jobs with Dorsey. I don't know home. what you're talking about. We don't have a duplicate story. But yeah, we'll take that one out. And thank our next sponsor, Segway um, Transition, please. Well, what I want to do is I want to. Do, do it again. I was on, it was on me. Do it uh, again. It's already, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's already shucks. changed. I'm not changing it back. Because what I'd rather do is I'd rather talk to you about Flywheel and just about Flywheel. Flywheel. They are a managed WordPress hosting platform that's built specifically for designers and creative agencies. What they do, they make it really easy for you to build, launch, and manage your client sites because they have done a their own dashboard that they built for the web designer that is loving WordPress. So they do nightly backups. They've got really, really super duper fast load times, and they have WordPress specific security. And what this means is that when you call their support, they actually know WordPress. It's not just a hosting company that says, "Oh, you run something on WordPress, whatever." Um, Again, they know WordPress inside and out, and that knowledge oh, of WordPress helps incredible. you launch sites. They help you figure things out. You don't have to suffer by not knowing whether something's going to work or not. So, again, they will help you out and say, hey, this plugin's causing an issue. Oh, it's so helpful. Oh, my God. I, just, I write them at their emergency account because when things break, things really break. It's not them. It's WordPress. But I find that I just say, what's going on? And they go, boop, boop, boop. And they figure out what it is, and they said this plugin's acting up. Yep. And again, they do some things the way Wistia does. Is they want you to learn all the different things, and there's a whole bunch of these uh, ebooks that you very well learn. designed, very visually yeah. pleasing. Nice, nicely done. There's so, a new one in there. Exactly. Go check out Flywheel. Go to the link in our show notes so that they know that uh, we sent you. Yes, and, and there uh, is a link in the show notes that you know we get massive credit for if you do it. S O C L dot B Z slash. What is it? Flywheel. Flywheel. Uh, all lowercase. So go sign up today. Yeah. Because we like them, and they are very, very nice. I like this cam twist. It's not. Nice. I'm ready to kick out of this. How it reappears. They reappear just sort the of clouds, like clouds, exactly. Just from the clouds. Because we're killing that. We're kill we're really killing this transition. Yeah. We're really we're killing it. But they're but they're new. It's new. It's neat. So. Uh oh, this was a big story. This is an interesting story here. Microsoft helps. Oh, I'm still looking at how we're drinking water here. Let me change it back to May. Uh, this is what happens when you drink a cup of coffee before the show. You go, blah, 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 blah. Wee. Wee, I'm zooming. Luckily, Howard's just saying, Oh my God, Seth has lost his mind. Yeah, all right, all right, has. Just, just part. This part, this part of his mind. Microsoft has helped the NSA bypass encryption. And you certainly reveals. Wait, wait, wait. First off, there's more, still more Snowden crap coming out. There, the treasure trove of Snowden information is so deep. And one of the things that he initially intended was, look, there's so much here. It's going to take you years to go through it and talk about it and expose it. So rather than just dumping the data onto a site and letting everyone have a free-for-all, part bad. of the reason why he turned it over the way that he did to a very specific set of responsible reporters was to say, look, you're going to need to take some time so go through it. Figure this was an oh, this was an oh shite moment for the reporters. They're like, oh my god, we, we, this is our career. Yeah, it, and it really has turned into a career for Glenn Greenwald. It's something where um, for better I'm, and for worse. Well, for better and for worse. But again, these are the kinds of things where when you you're able to look at a very specific piece of data and then do the journalistic fact checking. Who do I need to talk to? Who can I follow up on? So that it's not just here's all this information. But actually, do journalism with that information. It's not the WikiLeaks approach. Correct. So if you ever um, go to WikiLeaks and looked at it, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm done. I can't. Well, I, it's I, just I, these I, big, yeah, the analysis. Yeah. Like the thing is, I'll go. To, I'll go to what was it? What's Glenn Greenwald's new thing on First Look Media? It's um, oh, whatever his 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 part of First Look Media. He right. does a whole thing, or he runs a whole a whole department there, and. I like his analysis because he explains it to me. He doesn't say, here's the, here's the stuff. Right. Well, go at it. He explains it. He does the journalistic method and explains it to you in in eighth grade reading level manner, you know, as you're taught in journalism school, as, which I went through. He, he, he goes through it and explains to you what you're looking at and why this is a story, which are like some yep. commentary in there. 
much to his much to his detriment you know his boyfriend has been detained here and there flying between the u.s i mean he luckily lives in brazil and brazil's like um screw you us we're not extraditing greenwald he's just a reporter so eh, we'll see here's something else in the news apple confirms it's disabling the news app in china are we surprised well you know what's interesting about this Apple has to have had to make a choice and it's news app basically pulled in news from lots of different places. So it could choose to do, it could say, you know what, we're going to censor some sources, but not other sources. And then they consider a safe Harbor. Exactly. So what they said was, look, we're just going to disable this app so that if you're in China, this is a feature you don't get because we don't want to have to play the censorship game. So on one hand, I think they've appeased the China. Chinese government and said, hey, Chinese government, we're not giving people access to this thing, but we're doing it in a way that says we're not censoring. So people can still use an iPhone to go look at whatever it is that they want to look at. But the news application, because of the way it curates and brings things in, they're it's saying, less messy to just say forget it. Correct. And um, look, China's a huge market for Apple. Yeah, it's where all of their growth yeah. is going to be. So well, let's say not- Is it second or first population in the world? Uh, after India. It's before India. Yes. And that's even with saying you can only have two kids. Right. But um, again, this is the kind of thing where what Apple's doing is they're basically disabling a feature as opposed to being a censor. Um, so I'm sure there's still some censorship in there, but just by disabling this feature, you're censoring. Right. But, you know, it's, and there, it's broad stroke versus individual. Like this guy talked about Tiananmen. Okay, we gotta censor him now. That's more right. specific. It's more like, oh my god, you're censoring me, versus like you can go anywhere else via VPN to find out stuff about the end and square or whatnot. Right. Well, and but the interesting you're not thing, app. Well, and the interesting thing about this is it appears that the way that they're doing that disabling mm-hmm. of the app is they're using geofencing. The same thing that makes that gives you really good accurate results in maps. And, and like Starbucks. And, and Starbucks and all these different things. <laughs> They're using that same technology to say, well, if you're in China, we're geofencing this app to prevent it from working. As Which is interesting versus VPN versus VPNing. People right. people do VPN because they're physically in China. Right. And if they're virtually in China, they're physically in China. Correct. And because they're geofence. Now I'm actually hoping, actually, I'm hoping that we're gonna get some, you know, letters to info at, at um philotech.org telling me that I'm completely full of poop. But um, I'm as far as I know, geofencing means that if, if you're physically somewhere, you can't get around this. Now I'm sure there's a way to get around. I'm sure there's a way to spoof where your location is. Maybe you can use a VPN. But as far as I'm concerned, I think that they, geofencing they, kind of fences you in more well, than they've done tests, and VPN does not get you in. So this is not oh, a know. we're doing we're checking your network request. What they're doing is they're saying we're looking at your carrier signals. And the fact that your carrier signal is coming from a location, we're looking at GPS, which gives you a location, and you know, we're basically you probably saying, can still spoof it, but it'd be really hard. Um, I think that in order to do it, you would probably have to be on Wi-Fi, and not you would have to effectively be on airplane mode so that you weren't using any of the carrier signals. Just use the internet and use a VPN. It's not worth it. Not for the news app. I, I hear it's not even that good. Yeah. I have the news app. I've used it. It's okay. It's not like Flipboard. I mean, when's the last time you looked at Flipboard? I mean, I, I get the yeah. news through Twitter. I have a Twitter list that says all my news. I go through real fast. Saying, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yep. Like, I, they, I will say it's not as pretty as Flipboard. It's but honestly, more, Flipboard. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of Flipboard. The, the flipping, it's pretty, but none of these news apps. That, what, I, what I like the best, honestly, this is a little bit of a tangent. Sorry, people, not really, but I like breaking. News.com. I like their. I like them the best because they're curated, and it is not like, and it doesn't talk about Bieber. Yeah. And they actually have a funny commercial on BreakingNews.com. Their promo is a news guy running, chasing a woman through her office, saying Bieber did this, Bieber did that. So it's actually kind of funny. Check that out on BreakingNews.com. I think it's a subsidiary of Comcast and of NBC Universal, but they curate from all different sources. So it's really neat. So. Medium. Medium. And I'm not talking about dress size. I'm talking about medium, which is actually, do you know their, their, their corporate name is A Medium Company? Okay. I think that's kind of funny, a medium company. Yeah. Well, there it is. Some geek humor there. Anyhow, 
Medium, which is a lot of people who don't know people who don't know about this who are probably under a rock. Medium is a blogging area, a blogging website where you can blog freely and talk about whatever you want and have people come to it. And, and people go there all the time and comment. And there's a lot of nice features. But now they are like you, I would say, shadow your URL over their sites. So you can have how are your mesh dot news, how are your mesh news dot news, right? And have it point to your medium account, thus branding it for you. So it's turning into a blogging platform even more. It's not, it's not, it's more self branding for yourself. What's interesting is when I read this article, you have to email them saying, I, I got this set up. Can you please turn it on for me? Which, can you imagine that inbox? That's crazy. I, I get the sense I like that, that though, because it's a yeah. personal touch. Well, I get the sense that that's a stopgap until they have all the uh, things worked out. Effectively, what they're doing is they're becoming a, um, I'll call it a lightweight competitor to WordPress and a lightweight or competitor to any kind of blogging platform where you can have your own domain. So whether it's WordPress or Squarespace or Wix, if someone's really all about writing and they want to brand it for themselves, why not? Now the downside of the way there's that there's no doing brand, it, let's stop there right there. There is no branding. It's still medium. When you go there, I went to a domain that was turned out to be medium. It's medium. It looks yes. like medium. It's just your domain up there. That's the only branding that you get. Continue, yes. Howard. Um, uh, one of the things that they aren't doing is actually related to legacy content. So if you wrote stuff on Medium and oh, you now no. want to brand it to your own domain, they're not going to go back and say, oh, well, this content's really yours. So <laughs> we'll now refer that to your original URL. So all of your legacy stuff stays in the legacy world and the new stuff can be shadowed. Because That's weird. Medium, well, they don't want to lose their search relevance. Remember, one of the good things about Medium is that Medium rises all people on Medium because of the general of the way they index. Um, so now you're going to be diluting it by putting your own domain on top of it in terms of what uh, Google and other search engines will see. Really? Yes. I mean yeah. That's one of the things. If you look at their yeah. frequently asked questions, that's the reason that they're doing it. They could technically do it. Yeah, very easily. They, they don't want to break this, this URL with this ad sign. This yeah. Twitter account is now this. Yeah. I think it's actually more work to engine. not do that. I think it's actually more work to not have the legacy stuff go forward than it is to let the legacy stuff go under your domain. I think it's actually, right. the more I think about my web design brain, that actually is more work. Well, but remember, they're not actually giving you a platform that you can customize. What no, they're doing is point. they're effectively hosting text content. Uh -huh. So there isn't that much that they need to do other than some basic cloaking technique, mm -hmm. which, you know, if, if what you want is a place to put a story up, and you're not trying to really do anything fancy with a with an actual website, this works. So making it so that you can have your own custom domain that takes some people to your stuff, it's fine. Um, it's not a replacement, it's a you know a small step from you know freebie to okay, I want to have a little bit of branding. I wonder if they're gonna charge for this eventually, or charge for more features. Because there's no mind speaking of remember, this is Ed Williams' company. Ed Williams started a blogger. Went to made Twitter with Jack Dorsey and right. a bunch of other guys. I read the book Hatching Twitter, but I forget the names of everybody mm -hmm. else. But Jack Dorsey, Ev Williams, uh, Biz Stone. Yep. Uh, Biz Stone was actually back with Blogger with Ev, but then the Ev went back to the blogging area with Medium. So there's there's a little bit of history here in a yeah. way, and I just think it's interesting. So, so Howard, what are we doing right now? We are podcasting. And how long has podcast been? How long has podcast been now in the in the world? About two decades. About two decades, and finally, we didn't, we didn't necessarily think of them as podcasts. No, they were like radio but shows. Putting were, audio on the web for people to listen to whenever they wanted is absolutely almost as old as the web itself. It is just an exactly. audio. Exactly. I would say Roy came in the mainstream. I mean, when I when Seth, with the whole world surrounds me, of course. But when I first heard of of podcasting. It was like 2005 with This Week in Tech. You know, you hear me referring back to the other ports show all the time. And I started listening to that show, Israelisms, which is another show that doesn't exist anymore. A few other shows. But now, WMYC, which is a big, 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 big market of a um, public broadcasting system um, up in New York City, is now opening up a podcast division. So hat tip to all of us podcasters. We're in the big time now. Absolutely. Because they're seeing a mass exodus from the radio to the podcast. Probably starting with 
the whole serial phenomenon. That they're saying, hey, look, serial can do it. Why can't we do it? And well, you know, I think it's great. What do you think, Howard? I mean, you're I, a podcast. Yeah, I think one of the things that, you know, I like to listen to or watch what I want, when I want, where I want. And podcasting is really just part of that. So mm -hmm. if I want to listen to a particular, you know, audio podcast or watch a video podcast, I don't want to think, oh, well, I have to wait until this day. I've got to make sure to remember to DVR it. It's like, no, I've subscribed. When new content shows up, it's on demand it. radio. It's on demand radio. I think about it this way. On demand radio, what does it not have? It doesn't have live feedback, live interaction. But it also does have convenience. And I can tell you, when I think about the number of times in my life that I've thought, I really want to call into this radio station, that is, the number of times that I've wanted to call in is like I could, I could you know, count it on Our one hand. Preston and Steve, if, maybe that's it, yeah. Or Howard Stern. I, I think about it this way. It's, I mean, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. I'm listening to it. If it's happening two hours later versus right now, it really isn't going to change my enjoyment that much. So, but with that, with, that, with that in mind, like this, I mean, if anyone wanted to watch this, I mean, I've released it publicly on mm -hmm. on Google Plus, but no one, but no one literally looks at Google Plus anymore, supposedly. Right. But Blab, you do it live, and they send, they actually send you the files. Yep. I mean, you can actually do a live show with live call-ins if you really try. Yep. So you can. So, again, these are the kinds of things where it's nice to see uh, more of the traditional side, just recognizing that. Uh, the internet isn't bad for them. The internet is good for them, and it's just different for them. It's just and, new. And also not repurposing their shows, which I do like that you can get some NPR shows that are radio shows on mm -hmm. as podcasts. But these but WNYC and hopefully WHYY will do this eventually down in Philadelphia, where we're based around. But hopefully they will see that we should, you know, yes, releasing you know day later shows of our radio shows are, is great. I mean, they're now, they're now recognizing that let's do some, you know, non-live stuff. Let's like, have more fun with it. Like, maybe some live drama, like bit, like radio dramas that you don't necessarily want to do live. Yep. So, oh, segue, please. Like, like, hold on. And now I'm on you, so can we see the fade You're in on now? me? Well, then right. what I want to do is I'm going to, you know, I'm going to run a little spot here. Yes. There we go. Very nice. I promise, guys, next next show we'll just do the fade ins without the commentary around it. But yeah, let's thank our next sponsor, Zoho Mail. Howard, tell us about Zoho Mail. Why don't Howard. I play that again? There we go. Howard, tell us about Zoho Mail. Howard? Is it not playing my video? It's playing your video. You're just not talking. Are you sure? You're not talking. I hear you talking right now. You need to talk. You need to say this, the speech. I no. see your video. You saw the video, but you didn't hear the audio on it. I didn't hear your audio, no. Oh, well, that's a pain. Oh, you were trying, oh, trying to play pre-recorded audio. Yes. Are you getting too fancy? You're, gonna, you're breaking the podcast. I'm not breaking the podcast. Now we're black screen. So, you know, we like to think so, oh, Mail. They're a professional email designed for your business with professional class features and security, as well as the convenience of a web and mobile, you know, access. Um, learn more about Zoho Mail and sign up for a free, ad-free account for up to 10 users. It's ad-free, ad-free, and free for 10 users it's by clicking users. on the link in our show notes. And thank them. And they're awesome. They did a redesign late, recently, and it's really slick looking. It doesn't look like Outlook from 2003. It actually looks <clears> really <throat> slick. I really like it. So it's a good alternative to Google Apps. I mean, Google Apps is great. I use Google Apps all day long. But I like having Zoho Mail for the Philly Tech because it's free. And if I wanted more space, I just have to pay them the same price I paid Google Apps for. But when I need to get the space, it's there for me. So it's nice. And here, look, there's Howard. He's back. Hey. That, was, that was a failed segue, whatever spot. Whatever. Yeah, we move with it. Let's go on to our picks of the week. Now, I talked about this one, I think, with you, Howard, before. Full Contact yes. app. It's the app. But they released, recently, they've had an iOS app for the, the, the phone book thingy for a while now for iOS. They now have it for Android as a beta. 
And between their card scanning, which is interesting because they actually have people reading your cards and transcribing them for you. Oi. Oi. Exactly. <laughs> That's a great response. But oi, you know, they have people like the FNP, this, as one comes in, they, it must not be, must be scalable or some mechanical Turk or something like that. But they scan it through, and they, they tell you about it. It was great for Android. It puts it into your address book. Wonderful. Now I find that their address book is a lot easier to use than my own embedded app address book on my phone. Always I, a good thing. It's a great thing. So check it out. Full Contact app. It's at fullcontact.com. It's not free. It's, I think, it's $59 a year. And it's, it's pretty lightweight CRM, but I'm using it. I love it. And it's great. So... Howard, I'm so jealous of you. I want to use Overcast so bad. Why? Is true. it because Overcast is the absolute best podcasting app anywhere? And here's the other great thing. They have made it free. What? So and only for iOS. It's an iOS app. It's called Overcast as a podcast player. Here's what I really love about Overcast. Aside from the fact that, okay, you've got your, you know, you've got your the show that's there. You've got your playlists and podcasts and stuff like that, and you can search through and add a podcast really easy. Mm -hmm. Here's this feature. They have smart speed. Mm -hmm. Then what it does is it shortens the silence without changing the pitch. Oh, that's nice. And they also do voice boost. So if people's voices go up and down on a podcast, oh, it awesome. equalizes them out. And it's uh, you know, it does it in a way that you don't really notice that it's doing it. Um, and again, the amount of speeding up is very easy to customize. Um, this is one of those things that other things where it speeds it up, it, doesn't, it gets uncomfortable. This does things like it just takes out those little silences. So an episode that might be 39 minutes becomes 36 minutes because you're only giving it a little boost. You're only saying, just make it a little bit faster. So you don't even notice that they're going fast. I don't ever feel like someone's talking super duper fast, but yet instead of it going 39 minutes, it goes for 32 minutes because it figures out where it can shorten things. I wonder how, what it'll, I wonder what I'll do with me on coffee. Well, and, and here's the uh, <laughs> here's the crazy thing about it. Uh, someone said to me, "Well, what does it do to music?" The answer is it doesn't do anything to music because when it listens to the music, it says, "Hey, I can't shorten this." So it speeds things up a little bit, but it doesn't change the pitch. So you really don't even notice it with sound. You don't notice those uh, music files changing. This is really, Martha Arm. Really this is Martha well Arm's yes. app, right? Yeah. Yes. He did. He just recently was in the news for his ad blocker that he took off the market. But this yep. is what made him big. Yep. He's still taking donations, and there's still some extra fancy in-app purchases. But for all intents and purposes, Overcast is free, and the wow. normal average user will use it. They'll use it for free, and they will love it. And you know, great that they're doing it. Why not? And for a quick hat tip to the Android side, Pocket Cast. Is on both both platforms, and Pocket Cast isn't half bad. I, I really like them. They do s similar stuff. They're Aussies that from down under, but I mean, Overcast. I, you hear about the it, and you hear you hear about Marco Armit and what he does, and you know how he's been one. Of the, I think he was, he was one of the original app developers for that iOS system, and like, he just is a really good developer. And you hear about Overcast all the time. And you're like, it won't make me go out and buy an iOS device, but Yep. It's intriguing. Yeah, Marcos did, did Insta, uh, Instapaper. Instapaper, that's, that's the one, Instapaper. And he brought it to Android. Yes, he did. Brought it to Android and sold it for a crap ton of money. Yes, he did. Good for him. Good for him. I'll bring exactly. Overcast over, please. I, and I'll buy it. I will buy it if you bring it over, Marco. I'll well, buy it. I'll pay and the fact that he's, that he's launching it as a free app uh, on iOS, it actually shows signs that it will come to Android. You think so? Yeah, because there's um, this is one of those things that a lot of iOS developers would look at the money and say, well, why should we launch it on Android? Because no one buys apps on Android. So if he decided that this app is making money without charging for it, because whether it's in-app purchases or um, I haven't seen any ads on it, I don't think that's any that's part of his experience. No, but in-app um, purchases, a lot of people on Android don't buy apps. But the I think purchase. in app purchases, I think Android is actually known for the in app purchases. Yeah. I spend money on in app purchases all the time. It annoys me sometimes when it's like, oh, I thought this was a free app and now I can barely do anything without buying it. Right. But I'm more apt to just, I'm more app. Oh, God. Pun not intended. I'm more <laughs> apt to buy, buy the in app purchase once I'm saying, all right, it's downloaded on my phone. I want to use this. I, I committed to doing it. All right, three bucks. Here you go. You know? 
So I hopefully it'll come. Marco, bring it, bring it, bring it to Android. So, anyhow, you know, we want to hear from you. Email us about anything we talked about this show. Email us, say Seth, lay off the coffee before the show because you're talking faster than Howard and more than Howard this episode. But um, he did another transition, which I missed. Um, we want to hear from you. Email us at info at phillytech.org. Tweet us at phillytech underscore org. And that's actually where we do get a lot of, we do get a lot of um, feedback on, on, on the Twitter account. And you can even call us. Please, call us. <laughs> Check to make sure it's working for us, will you? 908-758-3248. That's 908-758-3248. And leave us a voicemail. Give us a reason to figure out how to have Howard figure out how to play it on the show. He would love that challenge, right, Howard? It would be my pleasure to be able to play it on the show. He was all excited. He was like a kid in a candy shop at the beginning of the show. Look, let me work. Look, let me work. So it's a good thing. Give Howard projects as if he doesn't have enough. And real fast, Howard, where can we find you? And please plug your new course. Oh, I have a course. So oh, you yeah. just remembered all of Of course, what I want you to do is just go to howardyarmish.com and there will be a gigantic, hang on a second, hang on a second. Drum roll. Uh, Sorry, did he, I threw him off. I didn't know I was going to tell him I was going to do this. He, I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, I was he's been putting up with me this whole time plug. on coffee, so I figured I'd give him a plug. I didn't know I was going to get another plug. So in putting up the plug, hang on a second, I'm going to make this plug a good plug. Um, what I want you to do... The is killing me. <laughs> exactly. The buildup is definitely, you know, definitely there. But what I want you to do is I want you to go over to my website, which is howardyermish.com, and there is this big old button here that says Powerful Social Sales with LinkedIn. And when you click that button, it's going to take you, well, you can sign up for my free email as well and get the free course, but if you want to pay for a course, because it's a really good course, you go to yeah, Powerful I, Social I, Sales I with LinkedIn, you jump over there, you click the little... You know, you click the button, and then you click the Buy Now button that's up here. And when you do that, it's going to prompt you to make an account. You make an account. And then you're going to put in a promo code. And that promo code is Philly Tech. And Philly that, Tech. It's good for Philly November. Tech. And that promo code is going to save you some money. I think it saves you, what did I say? I forget. Uh, if you wanted to see it, check out the interview show that we did with Howard yes. yesterday, which is now live on YouTube and the interwebs. And while you're at it, you can find out it'll save you a, it'll save you a significant amount of money. Yes, I think, I think it's like you know, it's one it's two twenty five. It's like one seven. Um, let me right? tell you exactly what that coupon. Just double. I'm double checking everything just so that there's no issues, there's no weirdness. But if there the, is, you can always yes. you can always you can always tweet Howard at H Yermish and scream at him. Right. So you use Be the nice. coupon code Philly Tech and it saves fifty dollars. But 50. that is until the end of November. So eleven thirty, which is uh, November thirtieth. That coupon code Philly Tech will work and saves you fifty American dollars off of the course. It's I highly recommend it. Well, I highly recommend it because it pays my bills. Um, no, but, no, no. Uh, oh, here, here, we'll make it less less pluggy. I highly recommend it because I'm taking it right now. And though I'm I'm a little too ADD to follow every step in the process because it's very intense and it's a great course. It gives you step by step things to do every single day for twenty five weeks. It is amazing. Even if you don't want to do it, you know, you know, every yeah. all of it, it's it's. I think it's 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 Linda.com quality, in my opinion. I'm not just saying because you're my buddy. I am saying because you're my buddy, but I'm saying because I mean it. It's Linda.com quality, and even if you just listen out here and there and pick up some tips, there's tips that have been working for me, and I and I just been yeah. going through it like, oh, that sounds interesting. And let me listen to Howard here, so he knows his stuff, people. And he's not saying it, I'm saying it. So Thank there. PowerYearMish.com, use the promo code PhillyTech at checkout, get say, $50, five zero through November 30th. Yes. And you can find Howard on Twitter at HYermish. Yes. Now, Howard Yermish, you'll have a guy pointing. And pointing yeah, that's, and that's the one of me saying, that is not me. Go to the other account. I love that one. That's funny. And you can find me at Seth Goldstein on Twitter. SethGolson.me is my portfolio site. It needs to be updated. Check out Cycling.me. Cycling for me, excuse me. Not Cycling.me. Cycling for me, which is Cycling for dot me. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, I guess not drink so much coffee before these shows. Wow, show. this is like intense. This is intense. Cycling for dot me. That's where I blog about my cycling habit. And I might have to go on my bike after this because I think I need to burn off some steam. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a fun episode. 
Um, everyone in these, I think, probably needs to take you know, a chill pill. And me, mostly. And enjoy the rest of the day. Very cool. All right. Ta-ta for now. Take care.